the incidence was 301 people, which is 5%, versus 226, which was 3.87%. But why would we care about the red blood cell count? Because don't yeah. people at altitude have high red blood cell counts? Um, this is another one that is a, a very debated topic. And the, yep. the literature is not overwhelmingly thorough here, but we do have a couple of good studies that have looked at this and then the downstream risk. Yeah, the 1,000-foot view on that, pun intended, the 5,000-foot <laughs> view on that, pun intended, is that at altitude, a lot of times you have a loss in plasma volume as well as blood volume at times as well. So it's a relative increase. Whereas um, with testosterone replacement, you often get an increase in blood volume, but an increase in blood volume that is skewed towards an increase in hematocrit, which is the percentage of your blood that is taken up by red blood cells. So in this study, there was about 6,000 men. Uh, they received testosterone. They developed polycythemia. They matched them with another 6,000, 5,842 to be exact. Um, and they matched them with those individuals that did not develop polycythemia. And yes, indeed, the men with poly polycythemia had a higher risk of MACE slash VTE. So I guess it's kind of like a composite primary outcome. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the incidence was 301 people, which is 5%, versus 226 which was 3.87%. Um, so that's a relatively small difference, but that's a large enough study to where its p-value was extremely small and its odds ratio is 1.13 to 1.61. So definitely something that's statistically significant and clinically significant. Yeah, so about a 35% you know, relative increase in the risk there for people that are you know, getting this elevated red blood cell count. Now, we don't know how many of those people had sleep apnea that was contributing or other factors, smokers perhaps, but yep. um, it wasn't 100% of the patients that had some like thing we can point to and say, aha, the testosterone did not do this. Mm -hmm. It's well known that testosterone does increase in most forms, increases the red blood cell count. And the term polycythemia is um, not my favorite. I, I prefer like Secondary erythrocytosis refers to the erythrocytes, the red blood cells specifically. Yep. Polycythemia, if I, if I tell a patient, oh, you've got polycythemia from your testosterone, they're going to go online and PCD. WebMD is going to tell them they have of era. blood cancer or something yeah. like that. They're like, oh my gosh, testosterone gave me blood cancer. So we prefer you know, secondary erythrocytosis, even though technically polycythemia is correct terminology. It's just you know, confuses people. And no, you and no, it's not a terrible idea to do phlebotomy when your doctor or nurse practitioner tells you to. But doing phlebotomy is not going to fix everything. In fact, it is extremely common for patients to come to us that have both erythrocytosis, very high red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and they are also iron deficient because they have donated blood so often. And if you donate blood, uh, you can only do it so often before you get iron deficient. And when you're not donating blood, then you're going to have that same process return. And also the process that's behind it, which is increased erythropoietin and also that RAS dysregulation we mentioned earlier. Um, you want to address the root cause of that. Yeah, and maybe this is a good point to kind of skip ahead to some of those mechanisms that contribute to the increase in the red blood cell count. So, um, this actually has the potential, I mean, there's not a exact answer here, but the potential mm -hmm. to be mediated by both testosterone, or but all three actually, estrogen. testosterone, estradiol, and DHT can all play some role in testosterone production. So, you know, the graphic here and the big two points that I see discussed a lot are the, you know, increase in EPO that happens, EPO initially. Um, so you get more red blood cell production initially. And uh, you also have a decrease in a, a protein called hepcidin. Yep. In theory, this should be offset a little bit by estradiol. Now, estradiol would kind of do the opposite and increase the hepcidin. But it seems like the testosterone um, overpowers the estradiol in terms of just regulating this protein. So then you get uh, basically iron that gets on a, a high-speed conveyor belt into and funneled into red blood cell production. So mm -hmm. your iron is getting shuttled into you know, erythropoiesis. Um, you can be iron deficient. Your body's just going to take most of the iron you're absorbing and direct that resource towards red blood cell production. 
So that's sort of the pattern where you get these people in limbo, um, where they've over phlebotomized, energy levels are terrible, and they've got high red blood cell count, and they think, oh, well, I must just feel this way because my blood's thick because I have a high red blood cell count. Yeah, extremely common to see. Uh, can't you just give those individuals injectable estradiol? That's going to stimulate hepcidin, which is going to help with iron uptake, right? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you've solved the problem. Uh, estradiol also binds the estradiol alpha receptor, of course, which particularly in the liver directly induces the synthesis and release of uh, platelets, but also leads to erythrocytosis as well. So estradiol can also do that. And then we mentioned DHT. Um, we, were, we always joke about that DHT receptor. Maybe there's a DHT receptor, but there's probably not. Uh, as far as we know, there's just an androgen receptor. DHT just tends to bind it very strongly, especially in some tissues, um, likely the bone marrow. Yeah. And I think this is largely from either in vitro or preclinical data where the, the DHT seems to be perhaps a slightly more potent driver of stimulating the bone marrow to produce those red blood cells. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of red blood cells. We obviously don't want a blood clot in our lung or our leg for that matter, or our heart. Um, but uh, a lot of people know, know platelets as the sticky things that stick red blood cells together and cause a clot. And they're not entirely wrong. There's a lot of other inputs with that. And um, we'll chat about that at some point as well. Mm -hmm.